So when you have a collapse, and we've had three 80% collapses over the years, it, everyone's assumptions just gets blown out the window. It doesn't matter what you think it is. When you have an 80% collapse, you're, you're just kind of in the middle of a storm, and you, now you're in the water, and you're swimming, and you don't know what's going on. Welcome to our segment YouTube and DCA friends. Today we are going through three main stories. Let's start with Michael Saylor. According to an article from Finbold Finance, Michael Saylor breaks the silence on dropping MicroStrategy CEO role. He says the primary responsibility of a chief executive officer is to run a software firm. Saylor, who made this statement on August 3rd, he claims that as the business expanded to 2,200 people and thousands of clients, Hence, the decision to make Pong Lee as CEO was made. In addition, the now retired MicroStrategy CEO claimed that this was the impetus that allowed the business to elevate Pong to be president and CEO, and I have been wishing to assume the post of executive chairman, so this is my decision that has been many years in the making. Recall that in January, MicroStrategy's former CFO Pong emphasized his company's decision to acquire and retain Bitcoin despite the market's turbulence, saying, So to the extent we have excess cash flow or we find other methods to raise money, we continue to invest it into Bitcoin. The next story is from Blockworks with the headline Bitcoin Ether to be regulated as commodities by CFTC per new Senate bill. The Commodity Futures Trading Commission, also known as CFTC, may soon be the regulatory authority in charge of regulating Bitcoin and Ether if a group of senators from both parties get their way. The legislation makes it clear that Bitcoin and Ether are regarded as commodities rather than securities, placing them under the Securities and Exchange Commission's Oversight SEC. The bill will now be referred to another committee as its next step. It will be discussed and voted on in the Senate after surviving the markup phase, and if passed, it will then be sent to the House. Lobbyists are unsure, unsure whether any crypto-related legislation will be passed by the year end given the forthcoming election season. I personally think that for Bitcoin to go global and achieve mass adoption, regulation will be inevitable. Between SEC and CFTC, I think the latter would be a better regulatory body as CFTC would, would give them friendlier treatment than the SEC. Moving on to another news from Crypto Briefing, BlackRock taps Coinbase for institutional crypto investment. The American Cryptocurrency Exchange disclosed a partnership with BlackRock to offer a variety of crypto services to the asset manager's clients. BlackRock's clients will have access to crypto trading, custody, prime brokerage and reporting capabilities through Coinbase Prime, the exchange institutional crypto investing platform, on par with, with Coinbase's own institu institutional clients. The company's CEO, Larry Fink, has also expressed his fascination with Bitcoin and his belief that cryptocurrencies have the potential to develop into a wonderful asset class in the past. The shares of Coinbase seems to be responding well to the news. Shares of the leading American cryptocurrency exchange have risen in line with the rest of the American stock market during the past week after experiencing a significant decline throughout the first half of the year. In pre-market trading, Coin has already increased by more than 7%. So that's a wrap up on the news. Next, I want to play a short video. Uh, this is Matt Kaiser. Matt Kaiser of the Orange Pill podcast discusses Bitcoin's future and where it's going, regardless of where its price is right now. In fact, Max claims Bitcoin price is the least important thing uh, about Bitcoin because its direction is upwards. Let's have a look at the video. Um, it's really tough because people tend to focus on price and they don't really want to hear mm. what this is all about. I mean, the price is the least interesting part of Bitcoin. When Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin and everything's in, based in Bitcoin, you won't be concerned about the price of Bitcoin. It'll just be Bitcoin. So since we're heading there, uh, it's foolish to even spend any time talking about the price of Bitcoin. The situation in Bitcoin is the volatility. So. When you have a collapse, and we've had three 80% collapses over the years, 
it, everyone's assumptions just gets blown out the window. You don't, it doesn't matter what you think it is. When you have an 80% collapse, you're, you're just kind of in the middle of a storm and you, now you're in the water and you're swimming and you don't know what's going on. And I think a lot of times during those 80% collapses, people's timelines get distorted. So if you have, like we saw the price go from $30 back to a dollar, and all the people who were talking about all the great things for Bitcoin coming in different places in the economy, uh, suddenly you're thinking, well, you know, maybe it's gonna take longer than we thought. We thought this was gonna happen in another few years. Maybe it's gonna take 20 years. That's uh, the story of Bitcoin. And uh, having been in this now for 11 years, um, I, know, I know the story. Um, it's really tough because people tend to focus on price and they don't really wanna hear Mm. what this is all about. I mean, the price is the least interesting part of Bitcoin. There are many things that are more interesting than, than price. Price is probably the least interesting thing because if you're heading toward hyper-Bitcoinization, uh, there won't be anything called the Bitcoin price. People don't talk about the price of the dollar unless you're going overseas, right? If you're a domestic and you're spending dollars all day, you just say, what's the price of the dollar? You don't know what the price, it's a dollar. If you go, when Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin and everything's in, based in Bitcoin, you won't be concerned about the price of Bitcoin. It'll just be Bitcoin. So since we're heading there, uh, it's foolish to even spend any time talking about the price of Bitcoin because we're heading to a post fiat money world where everything is in priced in in Bitcoin. We're heading into and we are now living in a, in a global economy that's now based on on commodities mm. and and you have uh, it's a, it's a much much different world the underlying fundamentals of bitcoin keep getting stronger adoption keeps getting stronger the hash rate is making new all-time highs and mining industry is proliferating and so all these fundamental aspects are growing the price will reflect all of this at some point uh, you never know at what point that will be but uh, it's, uh, it's on an upward trajectory uh, that is unstoppable because the amount of uh, foolishness going on in the fiat money world is infinite and they just print, print, print. So um, it, it's, uh, it's a great time to be stacking SAT. Yes, I agree with Max that Bitcoin price is on an uptrend trajectory and it's a good time to be stacking the Satoshis. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. Please check out our live Bitcoin seminars and webinars events in the link access to the event platforms are listed in the description on this video below. Thank you.